All right, what's up bike people? This is Fossil Fool coming at you from Rock the Bikes Metal Shop here in Berkeley, California. We are gonna show you today how to install this Rock the Bike generator wheel on your bike, turning your bike into an efficient bicycle generator. This is the generator wheel that we sell. It's got a seven speed freewheel. And not only does it have a seven speed freewheel, but it has a seven speed freewheel with an 11 tooth cog. So the smallest cog has 11 teeth, which is really beneficial for, uh, for you because it gives you more gear ratios to try and work with and find the gear ratio that is correct for your system. Um, the power that's generated leaves the wheel through this wire. And we're gonna show you in the installation how to install it safely without um, crimping the wire. First, we're gonna talk about what makes an ideal bike for pedal power. Here are some of the things that you're gonna to wanna to look for. Definitely wanna have a bike with gears. This bike has a seven speed uh, cluster in the back. That's ideal because the cluster that we're going to be shipping you is a seven speed cluster. So seven is good, eight is fine, nine if you're uh, trying to replace a nine speed cluster with a seven speed cluster. Sometimes um, it can be a little bit harder. So look for a seven or eight speed cluster. Next, um, think about people at your events who are gonna be pedaling. Are they gonna be able to get on and off the bike easily? This bike has a, a sloping top tube. This is actually a really small um, city cruiser mountain bike kind of thing. It has 26 inch wheels and it's got a pretty small frame. And the advantage of a small frame is that you're gonna be able to work with smaller people. This bike also has a really upright riding position with these uh, handlebars. That can be nice for events. You definitely don't wanna be seeing people who are stooped way over because you chose a bike that's really aggressive in its frame style. Now, um, we're gonna take a look at the dropouts. There's a couple of things that you wanna um, look at here. First, this bike has a derailleur. Definitely want to be choosing a bike that has a rear derailleur. If it has gears, but the gears are from an internally geared hub, that's actually not going to be a good choice for uh, changing over to our generator wheel. So this one has a derailleur, so you're good there. The other thing I like about this one is it has these large, simple dropouts. You want to be um, paying attention to funky, weird dropouts. Some dropouts on um, some mountain bikes have you know, like a cup shape that can get in the way of the axle nuts of the generator wheel, which are gonna be larger than the quick release skewer. So with that said, I'm gonna now show you guys how to take the rear wheel off of the bike that you have and put the generator wheel on, and then we're gonna um, put it in the stand. So we're gonna do all that together. First, I'm gonna Use the release mechanism on the V-brakes. Undo the quick release a few turns. Lift up the bike and allow the wheel to fall out. And you can set that down. I'm gonna turn this one over. Okay. Now grab the wheel again. Um, the cogs go on the side with the chain and the side where the power comes out goes on the side that doesn't have the chain. So I'm gonna show you guys the position of the, of the washers. On this side, which is the side that the power comes out, this little shelf right here where my pinky finger is that's gonna be on the inside of your dropout. The tooth washer is gonna be on the outside of your, of your dropout with the tooth portion angling in. Then you've got a, a round washer and the axle nut. On this side, it's a little different. The tooth washer is gonna be inside where your bicycle frame goes the tooth washer is actually serving as a spacer so that the gears don't rub against your frame. Then you've got this round washer and the axle nut. 
the tooth washer, the tooth rather of the tooth washer is facing up since we're working with the bike upside down. S same with this side, the tooth of the tooth washer is facing up. Notice once again that on the side where the power comes out, the tooth is curving in, but on the side where the gears are, the tooth is curving out. That's normal. That's the way that you want to begin this installation. Okay, so now it's time to actually drop the generator wheel into your donor frame. And we're hoping that we get a nice smooth drop, but sometimes you have to um, move the, the frame apart a little bit with your hands. And so if we need to do that, I will show you how. Sometimes I grab the, the wheel by these spokes um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up the chain, I'm going to set these teeth right about here, and then I'm going to push them back so that the derailleur ends up doing that. Okay, so I'm going to angle, uh, maybe like I'll choose one of the middle gears, and aim it for this area right here, and then push down and back, and it'll cause the derailleur to end up doing that, alright? so. Um, the thing, one thing to notice is that the axle has a slot to it, and that slot is going to interface with the parallel part of the dropout, okay? So you're going to want to start this procedure with the slot facing up and down, which it is, right? Next you're going to take one of these cogs and aim the bottom of one, maybe one of the middle cogs for this area of the chain right here. So you're going to maybe lift up this one to make a little room and then you're going to aim the bottom of the cog for right there and then you're going to move the wheel down and to the back and it's going to cause this to happen where your derailleur starts looking like a normal, normal derailleur. So I'll show you that. Lifting up that part of the chain um, finding a cog that looks about right, and now um, is the finesse part where I'm going to be trying to allow that rectangular part to go down in to the dropout. So if you're like me, then you've probably gotten to this point and you're like, wow, the axle nut is getting in the way which it certainly is. So we're going to take the axle nut off and that washer spacer thing, save those for a few minutes from now, and that's going to allow this next part to happen a lot better. So now we've gotten to the point where um, with a little bit of downward force, I was able to push that rectangular axle in. And now we can grab the washer and the spacer. And now at this point the, the nut is clearing the derailleur by a long shot so we have no conflict there anymore. And it's time to grab your 21 millimeter wrench or your crescent wrench and give it a few turns. In terms of the torque setting, um, we don't specify a torque setting, but if you're using like a wrench about this long, this is an 8 inch wrench, it would be hard to over torque it. If you're using like a 12 inch or longer wrench, um, you might want to be a little bit more conservative. So now, I'm going to continue the process. You can see over on this side, where we are. Okay, cool. Now that the wheel is in, I'm going to use this tie 
that comes with the wheel or a zip tie or tape to um, hold the output wire out of the way. Okay, great. So it's important to realize that the bike is now heavier than it was before because the wheel is heavier. So it'll be a little bit more awkward to flip it over. And before we do that, I'm going to show you the next goal, which is to put the bike in the stand where we can actually use it to generate power. Okay, so the stand is going to come to you like this. Um, you're going to want to take one side. For today's um, purposes, I'm going to use the left side and pull it all the way out until it's, um, until it's up against this flat piece right here with the indentation going up and down. If you do it where the indentation is side to side, then come in a little bit, rotate it, and then twist the handle to where the indentation is running up and down. Okay? This side also back out. You can see that there's this tooth process where the um, teeth expand and contract and it, that's part of how the stand works. When you choose your setting, you're going to end up sliding the locking mechanism in. For now, we're still adjusting, so we're going to have the locking mechanism out. On this side, which is the left-hand side, we're never going to adjust it at all. That's part of this installation process. You start with this out and you leave it out the entire time. It's going to feel you're going to want to adjust this side, but if you follow the instructions and you leave this side out and you use the right side as the adjustment side, you're going to get a good safe installation and be able to use your generator bike at an event. Okay, so let's shift this to where it lines up with the bike. Flip the bike over. And since the side with the wire on it is more awkward, I'm going to actually show you that side. The side that has the wire on it is a little bit more confusing. You guys are going to know, want to know exactly what to do there. Okay, so the next step is where you're actually putting the bike in the stand. And the goal is to aim the very strong hardened steel axle with the inside of this cup. You don't actually have to worry about the axle nut. It's so far in that it's never even going to be squeezed by the cups of the stand. You're really actually just talking about putting this rectangular point into the cup. Now it's gonna, you're definitely gonna wanna know, is this hurting my wire? And it will, it will look like the wire is getting pinched by the top, but I'll show you afterwards that it actually doesn't damage the wire if you do it correctly, which I'm about to show you. Lifting up the wheel, you want to kind of come down and in, down, this side all the way out. and using the adjustment screw to push it in. Okay, by this point I've already squeezed this a few turns. Okay, so now you're going to want to know how tight to make it. Now Janelle, I want you to step back and show the two arms of the stand. Now look at these two arms and how they're parallel. I'm going to show you what happens when I squeeze this too tight. Notice how they begin to spread like that. That's actually too much tension on the screw. 
There's no need to do it as strong as that. It will only continue to spread, which can damage the stand. So once you get to a level of tension where the bike feels solid, then you take that blue ring and slide it in. Once that blue ring is in, the handle can't turn and the bike is secure. Now once again, this side, the left side, is the side that we did not adjust. You can see that the handle is all the way out. The blue ring is not functioning at that side. Okay, so you don't have to do any adjusting with the left side for this technique to work. If you're going to use this bike for transportation, put the wheels back on and start adjusting the brakes. The, the brakes may need some adjustment after you have done your installation.